China escalates rare earth tech controls, the West's panic is real. Can you believe it? China, holding just one-third of the world's rare earth reserves, just dropped an official notice that sent panic through multiple Western nations. The U.S. has poured $300 billion into its rare earth supply chain over five years, yet still has to ship its ore to China for processing. The EU, which relies on China for 97.8% of its rare earths, has seen auto manufacturer motor costs spike by 12% with no recourse. This is not a resource monopoly, it is a full-blown technological chokehold. Frankly speaking, we used to sell flour, hard-earned money, but others could still buy it to make bread. Now, it's different. We've welded the oven shut and locked down the recipe. Even if you have mountains of wheat, without our technology, it's just brand fit for pigs. This is not a simple export control. It's a total rejection of the old, selling resources, model, replaced by a new game of controlling the technology. What's even more disruptive is that this control doesn't just cover refining technology. It also locks down rare earth recycling, the future bread and butter of the industry. Tens of thousands of tons of rare earths are hidden in electronics scrapped globally every year. Whoever masters the recycling technology holds the key to future resources, and China just pocketed that key. Next, we will fully dissect this grand strategy, the economic premium revolution, the geopolitical counterpunch, and the far-reaching future planning. Every step conceals the deep logic of great power competition. I. Economic decimation. The premium revolution from selling ore to taxing technology. Many people assume the rare earth contest is about reserves, but U.S. geological survey data from 2024 punctures that lie. China's rare earth reserves only account for 33% globally. The U.S.'s mountain pass mine alone has 4.3 million tons of proven reserves with a much higher grade than China's. Yet, strangely, MP Materials, the sole U.S. rare earth public company, still has to ship its ore across the ocean to China for refinement. The round-trip logistics cost is often higher than the ore itself. The ultimate economic code is hidden here, the fatal leap from comparative advantage to competitive advantage. We used to earn meager wages from resources and labor, selling a ton of raw ore for a few thousand dollars which others processed into magnets worth hundreds of thousands. Now, things are different. China controls 92% of global rare earth processing capacity, with an astounding 99% share in heavy rare earth separation technology. Without this technology stack, even the highest quality ore is worthless dirt. Take the high-performance neodymium iron boron, ND Fabi, magnet technology vital for EV motors. 80% of the global capacity is controlled by China and is now on the restricted list, essentially seizing the lifeline of the new energy revolution. The data is most compelling. After the policy was announced, the price of dysprosium oxide rose by 30%, but the valuation of JL Mag, a company that masters low dysprosium technology, immediately jumped 50% higher than its peers. The U.S. Department of Defense set a floor price of $110 per kilogram for NDPR, twice the market rate, yet no one could produce a qualified product. That is the power of a technical barrier. You can find alternative mineral sources, but you can never bypass the technological premium. Behind this technological contest is China's 40-year period of strategic hibernation and ultimate breakthrough in the rare earth industry. From academician Su Guangxian's triumph over Western technological blocks in the 1980s, establishing an independent extraction and separation system, to the 2020 construction of smart smelting lines covering the entire process, Chinese research teams have accumulated over 2,000 patent applications, forming a complete technical matrix in critical areas like refining and waste recycling. Today, China controls over 90% of the world's deep rare earth processing technology, creating an industrial ecosystem that the West cannot replicate for at least a decade. This shift from selling resources to controlling technology fundamentally represents a profound change in the paradigm of modern economic competition. While Australia is still relying on iron or exports for marginal profits, China has forged rare earth technology into a strategic economic weapon. Data shows that the same weight of rare earth products, 
sold as primary or sand, is priced at less than $100 per kilogram, while high-purity magnetic materials processed with Chinese technology soar to $3,000 per kilogram. This value jump reveals the wealth formula of a new era. Resources in the ground will eventually deplete, but technological innovation in the human mind is the digital gold that never runs out. 2. Geopolitical counterpunch, U.S. chip blockade meets China's rare earth kill switch. Everyone can see that this technical control is a precise countermeasure against U.S. technological containment. For years, the U.S. has fiercely guarded its semiconductor technology, from the CHIPS Act to the entity list, believing it could stifle China's high-tech development. They forgot that their own high-tech industries have a fatal soft spot. 90% of high-end magnetic materials rely on China. Without these materials, the F-22 fighter's radar is blind, and the Tesla motor simply won't turn. How brutal is this asymmetric competition? The Center for Strategic and International Studies, size calculated the cost. Rebuilding a complete rare earth supply chain would take 10 years and $300 billion. But China has now bolted the technology door shut, even with sufficient money and time. Copying the homework is not guaranteed. Take the U.S. Mountain Pass mine. Redeveloping it will take 10 years, and the separation plant workers' hourly wage is $54, five times more than in China. Environmental reviews alone will take three years, and local indigenous communities are constantly filing protests and lawsuits. The ultimate irony, when Trump tried to cooperate with Myanmar on mining, he found that even the extraction equipment had to be bought from China. The EU's situation is even more awkward. In the first half of 2025, it imported 2,582 tons of rare earths from China, accounting for 97.8%. The costs for German companies like Volkswagen and BMW have already jumped 12%. If the control lasts six months, costs could surge by 25%. When they look for alternatives, they find that Australia's leanest refinery capacity is only one-fifteenth that of China, and it is constantly under scrutiny by environmental groups. More interestingly, the U.S. tried to form a small circle with the Quad Critical Minerals Initiative to pull in allies but the EU immediately jumped out in opposition, arguing that this, America first, approach was essentially resource-grabbing. Commentary analysis. The most exquisite aspect of this countermeasure is that China did not act arbitrarily but utilized the existing legal framework with high skill. The control system outlined in the notice is like a sophisticated tenon and mortise structure. It not only regulates the direct export of rare earth technology but also standardizes indirect technology transfer pathways like joint R&D and technical exchanges, even extending to the risks of technology spillover caused by personnel movement. This layered control framework is essentially an active reshaping of global technology governance rules, transforming the ambiguous boundaries, long used by the West into a transparent, institutionalized constraint mechanism. This move also precisely exposes the West's double standards. Historically, the U.S. has used national security as an excuse to block chip technology to China, constructing a small yard with high walls. The EU frequently uses the Critical Raw Materials Act to erect market entry barriers against non-member states. Now, China is using the same logic, the security exception, Clause of Article 21 of the WDO General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade to establish its rare earth technology barrier. This is not only legitimate but also fully exposes the logic of hegemonic technological control long practiced by the West. This is not simply tit for tat, it is an emerging power's proactive correction of the winner takes all rule in the global technology governance system. 3. Future Planning. Recycling tech locks down the urban mine, key few people notice the ACE card, specifically included in this control, rare earth secondary resource recycling technology. How far-sighted is this move? Tens of thousands of tons of rare earths are hidden in phones and computers scrapped globally every year. The urban mine. In the next five years, this resource could account for 20% of global supply. Whoever controls the recycling technology controls the future resource initiative. And China has just shut that door. Rare earth recycling is far more difficult than mining, 
separating over a dozen elements from a pile of e-waste, while achieving 99.99% purity, requires decades of technological accumulation. The U.S. wants to get into it, but relevant university programs are nearly defunct. The U.S. Bureau of Mines stopped subsidizing mining and metallurgy majors 25 years ago. It can't find enough skilled workers, let alone develop recycling technology. Japan claims advanced recycling tech, but its actual capacity is a fraction of China's, and the cost is three times higher. Crucially, this action is a fundamental part of China's redefined new security concept. People used to think security meant only military and territorial defense. Now they realize that technological security and supply chain security are the real pillars. If China were to carelessly sell off its recycling technology, others could turn the urban mine into a resource reserve, and China itself could be choked off. By preemptively locking down the technology, China has seized the starting gun in the future resource race. This move is far more important than any immediate financial gain. Commentary Analysis This move completely exposes China's strategic foresight. It's not just focused on the current supply chain but is planning for decades of future resource dominance. The West constantly suggests China suffers from resource dependence. But China is using action to prove that the real dependence is technological dependence. While the U.S. is still throwing money at finding mines, China has built a wall around its recycling technology. While the EU frets over ore, China holds the key to the resources of the future. This teaches us that great power competition is not about temporary brute force, but about foresight of the future. The one who can see the battlefield ten years ahead is the one who will have the last laugh.